is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to our man Dave in Clearwater. Hey, Dave, Happy New Year. What's happening, man? <clears throat> happy New Year, too, my brother. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, man. How you been? I am doing well, man. I'm doing well. Can I throw a quote out at you? Sure. <laughs> in the market, somebody knows something. Someone always knows something. That statement was made by a great trader by the name of Tom O'Brien about six, seven years ago oh yeah and it kind of hit me like a brick you're right somebody always knows something hey carlos what's going on brother i'm calling you back tom this morning i had the pleasure to talk to you and your son and i don't want to miss the opportunity to talk to you again why well, I, I think you made some money on this bond <laughs> well yes tom your newsletter helped me that's a beautiful yeah. thing we appreciate the growling problem with us out here now tom o'brien <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. So everyone's having a great day, safe day. It's making it a great night and a great week. And we did make, we missed a bullet in uh, the Tampa, St. Petersburg, uh, Clearwater area, folks. Uh, we got... Uh, a lot of tree limbs down, fences down, but guess what? Minimal damage compared to what could be happening. A couple weeks, we'll be back to normal. Always do your best, but don't overdo. Always do your best, but don't overdo. When you overdo, you deplete your body and you go against yourself, and it will take you longer to accomplish your goals. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 42. NASDAQ is flat. S&Ps are up four. Gold contract uh, flat, $1,335.30. Silver up four cents, $19, $17 right at 95 cents. Platinum down three and a half bucks at 988 an ounce. You get the copper market off three pennies at 303 a pound. Light sweet crude down 15 cents. $48.22 a barrel. Notes. 10-year note, down 10 ticks, 126.22. 30-year bond off 23 at 155.09. Now, both notes and bonds, this is getting going to get really intriguing. The reason being is that they backed down. Well, first off, they did what they wanted to do, meaning they got up to their June swing highs, took them quite a while to get there. That was the energy. They used the energy. They got there. They got there with the volume. They're back down now. They're backing down with lighter volume. That says that notes and bonds aren't done, folks. They still want higher price, lower yield. King dollar. King dollar is up 27 ticks, trading 91.880. Now, King dollar finished an ABC structure on the way down last week. Got down to the 90.99955 uh, area. Bottom line, you get a bounce happening. This bounce is so anemic once again. It's, it's really, it's, it's pretty amazing, man. I mean, King Doll should be able to bounce to 93 or 94, but bottom line, the way it's trading out here today, uh, that just may not happen. The euro is trading at 119 to the U.S. dollar. The yen is out here at 110 to the U.S. dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world. and the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? You get the SPY traded up to an all-time high today, 250.05. Uh, we're at 249.69 out here, bottom line. Uh, you get the, the, the real number you got to keep your eye on here is 248.91. I don't expect we're going to close underneath that today. Uh, but that's the number. If, it, in fact, you did close underneath that, that would be saying, okay, you're coming back down the other side. Uh, we go in higher yesterday with 71 million shares. You were coming into 61 million shares. You were coming into 103 million. So I took out the 103 million, took it out with lighter volume. We'll see where this shakes out. When we actually take a look at the futures right now. It's going to be an interesting close because of the way uh, Apple has been trading out here. So inside the S&P futures, uh, this uh, 2489 uh Bottom line, that's 2490, actually, right where we are. That's the number to keep your eye on. And what that was, that was the high of the low that was generated out here this morning. Um, now, what we have just done is that we just went into that with, let's see, yeah, 10, 20,000, 20,000, 
No, it's, it's about the same. We just went, so that was 20,000 and a 10, 10 minute bar is 20,000 contracts this morning. We just came into it 18. Uh, with another new bar start, and we didn't reject that price uh, just yet. NDX 100, different ball game. If we take a look at the NDX 100, my take is that it looks to me like uh, Apple might have just uh, rang the bell on the NDX 100. The reason I'm saying that is that your benchmark on the NDX 100 is the 27th of July, 59.95.770. Uh, we came down hard that day after making a high. We get down to 57.50. You go all the way back up last week to 6,009, and today I try to basically get into that and uh, take out uh, the benchmark. And, and in both cases, uh, hasn't been able to do it. So the next hour, 50 minutes is gonna be important as to where good old Apple wants to trade to. Apple, big announcements everywhere out there today. Um, phone, watch, new set-top box. Uh, what Apple has done is Apple's gone from 163.96 we're at 159.95 right now, and it's really gonna make a difference where Apple closes. The reason being is that it has tested, it didn't get to its high. Uh, it got to 163.96, uh, and that low of the high is 163.63. Uh, so if you close at the lower end out here today with Apple, is that, uh, yeah, they have great products. They have PR, as Dave was saying, they had a PR machine that's phenomenal. Uh, bottom line though, uh, the closer that you close to 158.53, which is uh, a buck and a half from where we are right now, the more probability would be that it would just keep going south, which in fact would take the NDX 100 south. If we go take a look at the bond market, the 10-year note first, what you have with the notes, uh, notes are down on 1.1 million contracts today, and compared to what uh, it's going into, that's really anemic volume. It's coming into 1.5. Uh, at the 126.17 area. And I expect that, you know, right around this whole 126.17, uh, you're gonna continue to get some uh, decent support. The low for the 10 year in the last six months was established last week, 2.039. Right now we're 2.164. Gold contract, what do we have with gold? Gold contract did everything that it should have done, meaning did an ABC structure on the way up, extended it actually. Um, we got to a price point out here. There we go. We got to a price point uh, of 1362. Uh, we had 387,000 contracts. Gold back down yesterday, back down today, has light volume. Um, I don't expect this is the low in gold just yet. We're at 1335. This thing can get it to 1317, pretty easy. I like the way that it's backing down though, meaning specifically that it is backing down and it's backing down with light volume. If we go over and we take a look at the silver contract, what do we have with silver? Silver contract out here, trading at a price point of 1795. Uh, that little baby also came off the highs and we had 59,000 contracts. That's backing down with light volume, too. I do expect, though, we're going to see slightly lower price in silver also before we go topside once again. You stay right there, folks. We're coming back with our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. Dow right now is up 43. NASDAQ is up 4. S&Ps are up 4.5. We're going to be right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials right now up 45. You get the Nasdaq up 7. S&Ps are up 5.5. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as they do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the first hour. Don't forget, folks, Basil's got a great show here right at TFNN every trading day, noon to 1 Eastern Standard Time. You can get that program by going right on your cell phone. You go to TFNN.com, hit Tiger TV. You're going to get some great HD uh, quality video as well as audio. And... Uh, we are going to get Basil up and cooking, there's no doubt. Uh, so as soon as he's ready, we're going to get we're gonna get him up. We go back to the market for a second. Let's go take a look at some of the higher volume uh, stocks out here inside this market. You have um, Apple's down a buck 19. That's going to be fluctuating uh, right up into the close here today. Uh, we had it up, we had it down, we had it all around. Uh, the volume is going to be huge, no doubt about that. You get Comcast uh, down at uh, 25 cents. You get GE up nine. Uh, let's see, uh, Ma Bell is up 48, that's going to be probably on the, uh, yeah, I'd say that's going to be on the uh, Apple uh, phone, Apple watch, all of the above. Uh, Freeport Mac Marine is down 8 cents, you got uh, Hewitt Packet, uh, Enterprises are off 21, Intel is up 26, you got Wells Fargo up 99. Let's go over to the uh, Goldman Sachs, because uh, what you do have is that you have the financials that are running, but guess what, folks, these things are running with light volume. Uh, we're up uh, 498 on the XLF at 225, and 230 is where you have to basically keep your eye on Goldman Sachs because it hasn't been able to make it over that 230 area. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. Basil, what's going on? How you doing, man? Well, wow. <laughs> you made it. It's a beautiful thing. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> both made it. Good. Totally. So, yeah, this is a fascinating market. I mean, to have gone up over 250 points yesterday, um, you can understand short squeeze and all that. But um, I, I think that uh, there's quite a bit of strength from the way I read it. It looked to me like, yep, there was short covering. But in fact, I could see new buying in certain areas. So it was very interesting because for subscribers, we, we had been short and we covered and we've now gone long the Dow. Um, I think the Dow, uh, in fact, was lagging a little. Now it's starting to show a little bit of strength. And uh, just in terms of the relationship of the different indices. And as you said, Apple is sort of dragging the QQQ down. But in fact, I, I like what I'm seeing in the Dow. And I'll explain why for just in the short term. The, um, 
daily chart has seen the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, cross positively with the price moving higher, and that's very good. And there was a there was a, a challenge between the arch formation, what I call the lowercase h pattern testing, retesting the 26, 21,600 level. But once the market perceived that the damage, at least as the market sees it, was not as bad as they thought it would be. Okay. So it freed up the move to the upside. And the fact that we followed through, what I said to subscribers to my opening call this morning, is that if at 10 past 11 Eastern time, the Dow was up 60, the S&P was up 6, and the composite index was up, then there should be a positive close because what you really want normally on a big, you can see these candles here when you had this huge move in the Dow on previous occasions, um, sometimes it pulled back and sometimes it continued high. And this is one of those cases where I needed to see that, I don't know if we'll fill the gap, but we need to see that the gap, most of the gap held at the close today. So we've still got 35 minutes or so to the close, but I do like it because now it's got the cup pattern, whereas before it had the arch, which was essentially pointing down. Okay. Now it's pointing up. So it doesn't say how far. It just says the stochastic is still not great. It's under 80%. It's at 61%, but the MACD is cross positive, and that's giving strength. And then the other thing that's really important and something that has been very difficult because the Dow has tested the nine period moving average in the weekly chart so many times, but it refuses to break under it. It touches it and then closes above it. And on Friday, it went right to the line and then Monday we gapped up. So what I'm looking at is that the fact that the nine period moving average is held this well means that I've just got to give this the bias, even if it's on the shorter term, towards the upside. So what we've done is we covered our one small short. That was the Dow. We went long. And now what we've got is we've got only long positions. You remember I spoke to you about a stock called TWO on the August 3rd, yes. the day after my first webinar. I treated this as an experiment and as well as a position um, that we took. And we got into it. It did everything that we looked at. It, gave, it made the arch formation. You can see on my left side chart, this is the daily chart. It's made this, this the cup and then it, the arch failed, which is a good sign because now you could see the move to the upside and it ran to a PG, unusual, but it's pulled back and it's still holding very well uh, way above our entry price. We've got that. And also what's fascinating is that out of the blue, look at General Motors. We've been speaking about this for a few weeks. I say that we are, we are along a position and look, here it is up 62 cents at 37.97. And you had mentioned the other day that if the storm was very strong, then General Motors should be a beneficiary of that. And I think if you're looking at the autos, that's kind of what the market's saying, right. that, they, that they will be biased. So, you know, for every every lousy incident, there's always a positive, and this is probably the positive from that. And also, I've been looking at the um, XLF and, and pull back very sharply in that arch formation that I keep talking about. But now what's happened is, and I, I, I could be wrong on this, but I'm looking at the market and I'm saying, you know, I think that gold is going to pull back a little bit. I think that the dollar could rally, and I think that rates could actually rally a little bit. And if that's the case, we wanted to go long the um, the the bank, not the XLF. We decided to choose a bank stock, which has done very nicely today. And you can see in the XLF, which is the S and P Select Financial Spider Fund, there's a nice V-shaped pattern. It's it's only going to be successful if it can go uh, at uh, 2481 on the XLF. If it can close above 2491, that was the high of the first of September. But so far, this is very good action. So you remember we spoke about the rotational aspect of this market. One of the reasons why I didn't want to go heavily short was, especially the indexes, was because we've seen so many times that when the say the biotechs were rallying then something else would fail. And then when they were failing, you'd, you'd pick up on right. another sector that right. would take its place. And that essentially buoys the market. It kind of keeps what I call a high-level consolidation. In other words, you do get sectors that are weak, but the overall balance keeps the price of the Dow and the S&P and the, the NYA, the New York Stock Exchange, and even the Qs at the higher level. I think that's really what's happening now. So we'll know in a, in a couple of days whether this premise, because if you look at the USD uh, JPY, or it's the other way around, sorry, it's the, yep, you see the strong move in the yen, uh, the dollar-yen currency pair, and they, and the current, that yen has kind of been going 
with the Dow, with the dollar in many ways. So this is a strong move, but it's only the start of a strong move. So I want to see the dollar get to the 93s. Uh, it's been, it had a big pop up, but now it's struggling. And it tends to do that. And the same thing with the yen at 110.21. It needs to climb and get into the 111s. All of a sudden, if it does that, I think you've got a couple of weeks on the upside. Gold Z is a fabulous move, just needs a little bit of a breather to regenerate energy. And I think as it's doing that, so you could get the financials moving higher, uh, rates going higher for the shorter term. We'll see what happens. That's kind of the posture that we have. And folks, you can test drive Basil's newsletter by coming over to our website at TFNN. You go to newsletters, you go to trading newsletters, just in the opening call, test drive at 30 days, absolutely free. And of course, every trading day, 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time, right here at TFNN. Hit it on your cell phone, hit Tiger TV. Basil, thanks so much. Look forward to the show tomorrow. Thank you very much, Tom. Same to you. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Tom O'Brien has just announced that he'll be coming to Boston September 30th for a free workshop, The Art of Timing the Trade. Join Tom O'Brien Saturday morning, September 30th at the Boston Marriott in Burlington, Massachusetts, as he breaks down his trading methodology and provides you with the tools to become a more successful and profitable trader. Everyone that attends in person will receive a free signed copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. Daryl Martin from Apex Investing Institute will also be presenting for 90 minutes at this free event. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. Join me in Boston on September 30th as I return to my hometown for a workshop about the art of timing the trade. I look forward to seeing all the tigers and tigresses for this special free event. All action starts early at 7.30 a.m. with a continental breakfast and wraps up at about 1 p.m. Topics that Tom will be covering during his presentation include quality volume, cause and effect, ABC structures, swing points, and much, much more. For all the information on this free Boston event taking place Saturday, September 30th, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're looking to open your portfolio to a world of opportunity, consider the new market-safe emerging currency CD from Everbank. This three-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, let's go over and take a look at uh, Bitcoin. So uh, Bitcoin right now is trading at a price point of 4117 That's 4117 bucks. Uh, today it was at a high of 43.85, and uh, if we just take a look at this, what's moving this? This is going to be intriguing watching this thing shake out. So, uh, J.P. Morgan's having a conference uh, in New York today, folks. Uh, Jamie Dimon was just speaking at uh, quarter past one, and just took uh, Bitcoin from uh, 42.73 down to this uh, 41.17. So here's this quote. <laughs> it's pretty good, actually. Uh, J.P. Morgan, uh, Chief Executive Officer Jamie Dimon, said he would fire any employee trading Bitcoin for being stupid. 
The cryptocurrency won't end well, he told the investor conference in New York uh, this afternoon, predicting it will eventually blow up. It's a fraud and worse than tulip bulbs. Uh, if a JP Morgan began trading in Bitcoin, he said, I'd fire them in a second for two reasons. It's against our rules, and they're stupid, and both are dangerous. Uh, Bitcoin has so soared in recent months. Uh, of course, well, we know that. Uh, let's see. So uh, the tulip mania, uh, so this is how the tulip mania goes, folks. Tulip, tulips are a reference to the mania that swept Holland in the 17th century, with speculators driving the prices up a virtually worthless tulip bulbs to exorbitant levels that didn't end well. In big case, in Bitcoin's case, Diamond said he's skeptical authorities will allow the currency to exist without state oversight, especially if something goes wrong. Uh, someone's going to get killed and then the government's going to come down. He said, you just start in China. Governments like to control their money supply. Um, Diamond differentiated between Bitcoin currency and the underlying blockchain technology, which he said can be useful. Still, he said banks' application of blockchain won't be overnight. Um, the bank chief said he wouldn't shot Bitcoin because there's no telling how high it can go before it collapses. The best argument he's heard, he said, is that it can be useful to people in places with no other options so long as the supply of coins doesn't surge. If you were in Venezuela or in Ecuador or North Korea or a bunch of parts like that, or if you were a drug dealer or murder, stuff like that, you'd be better off uh, doing it in Bitcoin than U.S. dollars, he said. So there are many markets for that, but it's a limited market. Well, we'll see how that shakes out. Bottom line is that there's no doubt, folks, um, that it is um, dangerous for the banks. <laughs> so that's another one with uh, Jamie Dimon is, is pushing his own book. Uh, yeah, banks, governments, Bitcoin is, is, is dangerous. There's no two ways about it. Because who, he who or she who controls the money supply controls the bottom line uh, of freedom. And uh, in this particular case, uh, it doesn't look like, uh, well, servers are controlling the money supply. 877-927-6648. Let's go over and take a look at that uh, good old dollar and see uh, what she can uh, get done. So good old King Dollar. Uh, Hit a low last week, 90.795 on the December contract. Now, you came off that low, and yesterday we had decent volume coming off. We're rolling contracts right now, but it was decent volume. Today, it's anemic. You know, King Dollar here, in order to get a real good bounce going, has to get inside 92.230. That's where it broke down from again. Uh, you get inside that, then it's going to have the shot to get 93, uh, 840. And, you know, other than that, it doesn't look to me like you're going to get any type of real monster move. If we go into the gold contract, what you have out here with gold, uh, gold right now is trading at a price point of 1335. We got down to 1326. My take is that gold's going to try to get somewhere into this 1307, 13, maybe it holds the 1317. You know, we broke top side. We did it good. So, so picture. July 10th, gold's at 1211 bucks. Last week, you're at 1362 That's a monster move. It broke the consolidation, did with volume. Now, the classical setup would be that you pull back to where you broke out from. You do it with light volume. And then that would be the buy. Well, whether it's light or uh, if, it's, if it's not light volume, you don't buy it. Uh, but the classical setup, anyway, is pulling back to at least the breakout area. Uh, that area there, now this is what gets interesting. That area there that we're talking about, the 1304, 135, 137, somewhere around there, that also is a 0.382 retracement of the move higher. You know, so that's, that's a normal retracement in a market uh, that wants to go higher. So we'll see how that uh, baby shakes out. Inside the bond market, the same type of setup. If we take a look at the TLT, which is the 20-year bond fund, what you're going to see is that the TLT you had the swing point up here of uh, 128.57. You took the swing point out with monster volume. And then yesterday, you backed down with volume. But guess what? We didn't get the swing point. Now you're getting near the swing point, and it's contracting dramatically. You get 5.7 million shares traded. You're at 126.72. You went to 126.53. The swing is 126.43. 43 or 48? 43. That's a nice way to pull back. And uh, notes and bonds, they, 
are continuing to say they want higher price, uh, lower yield out there. Let's go over to uh, the King Amazon, see what Amazon's doing out here. So Amazon's hanging tough at 980. Still hasn't tested that low of 927. I suspect that's going to get tested. Um, going to uh, Microsoft. Microsoft out here trading at highs. Oh, this is interesting. Microsoft just, just gave this up at 74.96. Yeah. So Microsoft just tested its high and didn't hold. Uh, 74.96 is the number. We did 20, 27 million shares there. That was on the, th the 31st. This is not going to do that uh, type of volume. So uh, if Microsoft closes, oh, this is going to be interesting. So we're at 74.58. Now, if you go back to the 27th of June, of July, rather, that was, that's, that is one of the big benchmarks on the NDX 100 and the NASDAQ. So if Microsoft comes down about another... 16 cents coming into the close, that would be a major failure. Because what, what, what you would have there is this. You took the high out, the last high, which is the high, August 31st. You're not going to have enough volume. Took it out way lighter volume. If it closes here, yeah, then it's going to try to basically get down under the high, which I'm saying is the benchmark, which was on the 27th. Um, that being said, if you do it today, it's going to be more bearish. The reason being is that then what you have is that you have the aspect that you've got some acceleration uh, on the way down to the benchmark uh, with the aspect that it couldn't hold its highs. You know, uh, Apple, Apple's going to be the number out here. So uh, Apple right now basically trading, trading sideways. You've been as high as 163.96, as low as 158.96. Seven, seven, and right now you're just laying out here at uh, 160.89. And the real kicker is going to be uh, bottom line how we how we come into this close. Walmart, uh, Walmart out here, they they just uh, regrouped, so they're ready for battle with Amazon. There's no doubt. Uh, they're they just simplified their whole U.S. store operations, and what they did is that they they put it, I believe, into four. Um, operating um, basically subgroups versus six. Yeah, they, that's what they did. They consolidated it to four divisions down from six, each of them managed by a senior vice president. You stay right there, folks, and we come right back. Dow Industrials right now trading up for 43. Nasdaq's up 15. S&Ps are up six. We're going to be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund is currently offering four-year first mortgages on many of the fully renovated properties that it has purchased. The first mortgages are third-party appraised with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70%, providing a secured investment that pays a fixed return of 5% annually, which works out to a monthly income of more than $416 per $100,000 investment with your principal intact and secured. These four-year first mortgages are perfect for anyone looking for a secured investment that provides monthly income much like a CD. For more information, email tigerfund at tfnn.com or click on the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund banner along the right side of the tfnn.com homepage or call our office directly at 877-518-9190. There's a limited supply, so act now. 
Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials right now are up 40. You get the NASDAQ up 14. SPs are up 6. If we take a look uh, inside the Dow, uh, strength versus the weakness out here. What you have uh, strength-wise, folks, uh, it's the Goldman Sachs putting the most points in. That's putting in 33 points, $225 stock. Next would be Caterpillar putting 12 positive points, Home Depot 12. Uh, DuPont, uh, this is the new one. So this is a new symbol out here today. Uh, Dow DuPont, DWDP. Uh, inside the NDX 100, strength versus the weakness out here. Uh, strength uh, Semantic, that's uh, up 2.9%. JD.com is up 2.9. You got Seagate Technologies up 2.9, and Ross Stores 2.5, all in the positive. Taken away from it, Hol uh, Hol <laughs> Hologistic. <laughs> uh, down, sorry about that, folks. Down 2.4%. You got Express Scripts off 1.8. You got INCY down 1.7, and Hasbro is down 1.2. Uh, so Hasbro, interesting. It continues to uh, have a tough time here. We're down from $116 at, at 94. I see. Okay. So, yeah, this can get back into get back into 88 pretty easily, but that's still a really strong stock. That was a one-way trade from 2011, $31, uh, excuse me, up to 116 So that definitely is a, is a, has been a one-way trade uh, going topside. We go back into the XAU, the HUI, what you've seen with the XAU out here. Uh, XAU traded down to $88.95 today. You're at 90.30. You know, you get uh, three days on the way down. 89. So we got into the highs of uh, the 28th, and thus far, that's rejected it. Let me take a look at this again. So that's going to be interesting to see when we get this volume tonight because... <clears throat> You're coming at the 36 million shares, and I suspect it probably had less than that today. Uh, the Gold Bugs Index, what do we have with the Gold Bugs Index? Uh, Gold Bugs Index got down to uh, 206.69. They're both coming into the exact same bar, too. Yeah, My, I, I suspect this is still going to get down at that 204 area. We hit 206 today, at 204. In both cases, folks, the XAU and the HUI, they're, they're, they're set up a little bit differently when they should be because they're, you know, one's basically non-hedged gold and the other is hedged gold. Um, actually, let's go to the GDX first and we'll take a look at that one. So the GDX, yeah, that's up 12 cents. This looks to me like it wants to go to 23.86. We hit uh, 24.36 today. And that's dramatically lighter volume, which is really positive, man. That's really positive, um, you know, because what, what you have happened out here to G, in the GDX today is that you rejected 24.27, which is the high of the breakout from the 28th, and it's going to be on a light, lighter volume. So it looks like uh, the GDX, the, the equities, could get a little bounce first, and uh, we'll see if that bounces on light volume, big volume, all of the above, as to how it's going to operate um, after that bounce. Uh, the XLE energy. So uh, energy market out here, uh, 
Energy market's up 30 cents. We're at 65.30. That came off the uh, bottom the last two weeks. Let's just put this up on a weekly basis, though. It, this thing has to get over 67.12 before it means anything. Let's go look at the actual physical oil market. Uh, oil out here trading. Where is she? Okay, so crude's at 48.77. We're on the November contract. Yeah, this, this doesn't look like, you know, this doesn't look like it's going to make it back to that uh, $50 area. You know, 50 bucks was game, but guess what? Last week we made it to 49.84, 49.77, then came down hard to 49.69. And, you know, you're up today and you're going into 338,000 contracts. You only got 216. That's an indication that you're going to go back down to the 46 level. That's going to be pretty wild. Now, what could, what could be happening there uh, is that, you know, the whole time the dollar was even coming down, folks, it didn't give the oil market a push higher, which is just amazing. I mean, because, you know, this dollar was as weak as you could get. Bottom line, now if the dollar gets a little bit stronger, I could see uh, the oil market getting hit there. Uh, let's go back over to the NQs for a second, because this is really intriguing inside the NQs, because the NQs had gone from positive to negative. You just took a nice counter trend bounce. That's what it looks like. So coming to this close is going to be wild. So when the NQs, they hit a high out here this morning at the open of 6,012, then just went south immediately to 5980. 50, it took them the rest of the day to get back up to the price point of 6,060, go south again with volume. And now, bottom line, you know, we, we'll see what it can do. So looking at this uh, intraday, what you definitely did have is that your first low bar out here had uh, 8,900 contracts. You went into that, the first bar with 8,600 contracts. Next one, I mean, more than that. That's well, interesting. They're all 86, 86, and 82. Okay, so you, you three buys down there from the lows all get pretty good volume. So that brings your probability higher uh, that in the next 12 minutes, we just finished a counter trend bounce on the NQs. Doesn't mean they have to get down to the lows of that, but they, they're up four bucks. That's saying that they won't stay in that positive uh, area as we'll come into the close. And what that's going to be all about, folks, um, is Apple. Let's, Apple can move those NQs in about a heartbeat. Apple right now is down a buck, which is nothing, okay? The low for today is uh, 158.77. Um, and that has volume down there. So uh, we'll see whether they sell it right down coming into the close. And this is going to be really interesting because there's no doubt it being such a big day for Apple that there's a huge amount of people that have day traded it. So normally, if I just looked at the day trade aspect, that would be saying you're gonna, they'd be selling it off during the day. The reason being is that the first... Yeah, almost all day long, it was above this price, meaning the 160.70. So what ends up happening is that when you're coming into a close and you're below whether it's been trading almost all day, especially on something like Apple, because Apple is a, you know, every dip they buy and they've got rewarded every single time. Uh, what does happen when you're coming into a close is this is close and it's not above all those, you know, but it's at a lower level, your probability does get higher that you can sell into the close. So uh, we'll see where that baby shakes out because the battle, no doubt, is going to be on right into the close with Apple. I mean, Apple would be uh, actually pretty smart just going out and buying their own stock today. Just goose the thing and get it up into that high because it, it hasn't hit the high yet. That's, that's, the, that's the bottom line, which is pretty wild. Volume-wise out here, what we have inside the NYSE, you're at 531 right now with uh, 10 minutes left uh, coming into the close. NASDAQ Composite, you're 1.493. The Composite, that's uh, shot volume, uh, uh, light volume for the NASDAQ Composite. You stay right there, folks. We're going to come back in with these uh, closing numbers for you. Dow Industrials right now up 48. NASDAQ's up 17. S&Ps are up uh, 6.5. We'll be right back.
Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under trading newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, right now, we have the Dow up 50. NASDAQ is up 17. S&Ps are up 6.5. Apple's uh, holding tight. Apple's only down 90 cents. You're at 160.59. They'll uh, do that battle coming right into the close out here. Uh, let's go. Uh, so in Apple's case, what you have, you had a high out here today of 163.96. The actual Apple high is 164.94. Um, monster volume, by the way. Uh, so their PR people better really get ready uh, for tomorrow morning because uh, if, in fact, you get just a lower price coming into tomorrow morning, this is going to be, uh, and we get volume once again, that's going to be volume off the high. And volume off the high, folks, um, sets up a much larger correction than you normally have. Uh, what we did do out here in Apple today is actually we hit the low of the high. And see this high that's out there, it's an anemic high, meaning when it made its high, it made the high on 16 million shares. That's it. Then it came off that high with 29 million. Um, you know, yesterday you went back up with 31. Uh, you couldn't, you didn't make the high number one today, and then you come down uh, and you've done, already done 68 million. So it's, it's, a, it's a big number. Uh, big number. No, no two ways about that. We go take a look at uh, the IBB. So the IBB is getting intriguing because the IBB has made a nice run. You're at, you're at $334. Uh, this little baby, you know, go back three months, you're at 290. Uh, it's been going sideways and it looks like, uh, yeah, I can test about this 336. 
you know, I'd like to see it tested one more time. Uh, what's happening with the IBB, the supply line that it's going into is a monster. This is, you know, the IBB topped out at 400 bucks uh, two years ago. It's the fast two years. But when it came down, it, it was vicious, folks. It made a high with 37 million shares on a monthly and then came down with 74 million and 74 million, and you've been going up into that with 20. So that supply line is going to be a tough supply line to take out. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming back with some more numbers for you. Dow Industrials right now is up 53. Nasdaq's up 17. S&Ps are up 7. You got Apple down 95. We're going to be right back, folks. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to Marty in Worcester. Hey, Marty, what's going on? Hi, Mr. O'Brien. How are you? I'm doing great. How you been, man? Not bad. You know, you guys, over the time and with a few of your courses and seminars, you know, you taught me how to fish. That's a beautiful thing, brother. Yeah, it's true. And so what happens is I still listen all all the time and to not only you but some of the others sure. to you know get an idea where the fish might be biting as far as your services they're a bargain when you compare them to a certain prominent man with real estate courses at $35,000 and no contact with the lecturers afterwards at all and you think of what you guys do for a few hundred and you can get access and ask questions forever you know it's a great deal no, no, we appreciate the growling problem with us out here. now Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. It's making a great night and a great week, folks. To master love, you have to practice love. The art of relationship is a whole mastery, and the only way to reach mastery is with practice. To master a relationship is therefore about action, not about attaining knowledge. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow Industrials finish up 61, NASDAQ up 22, S&P's up 7.5, gold contract flat, 13.3560, silver up 4 cents, $17.94 an ounce, platinum. Down three bucks at 9.88 an ounce. You got light sweet crude up 21 cents, 48 dollars 28 cents a barrel. Notes, 10-year note down 12 ticks, 126.20. 30-year bond down 23 ticks, 155.06. King dollar up 47 ticks, trading at 91.900. The euro is at 119 to the U.S. dollar. The yen is at 110.18 to the U.S. dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world. In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? You're at 250 bucks and nine cents. On the SPY, that's an all-time high. Volume was 51 million. Yeah, you're going into uh, 103 million, but you're at a higher high. That can get you a higher price. Dow Industrials. Dow Industrials was going after, uh, is going after its high. The high of the Dow. 22,179, 
The low of that high, which was established on the 8th of August, is 20,057. So you're into it, that's saying that you can more than likely hit it. Uh, we hit 22,134 out here today. The composite, NASDAQ composite, composite right now uh, up 22 bucks. You are at 64.54. Now the high in the composite is six points higher. It's 64.60. If we take a look at the NDX 100, and this is what it's going to be all about tomorrow morning, was about today, uh, is the NDX 100. Why? Because of uh, the big Apple announcement. Now, so what the NDX 100 did is this. Your, your benchmark is the 27th of July. Now that's not the high, folks. The high, uh, it went up there and tested that on the September 1st. The reason I'm saying that the benchmark is the 27th, because that's where we had taken out the highs that were established on the 9th of June. We did it with vigor, and then it gave it up in spades. Uh, and that's a, big, that's a big number, because the same aspect of how we sold down on the 27th, that's how we sold down on the 9th of June. Uh, bottom line is that this number is going to be a big number to keep your eye on. And this number is only uh, all of like 123 hundredths, no, thousands of one. That's what we're dealing with right now. Pretty crazy. Gold contract. What do we have with gold? Gold contract out here. Uh, you pull back a rejected lower price. You did have lighter volume. Uh, bottom line, I don't think this is done on the way down, though. You know, we had gold had a great run. We went from 1211 two months ago up to 1362. I expect we're going to basically uh, get down somewhere into this uh, 1320, 1317 area, uh, build some cars. I like how it's pulling back. It's pulling back with lighter volume. That's what you need. Uh, bonds. The note and bond market, folks, just want higher price. It's pretty amazing watching this thing shake out. So what the note and bond market had been doing and trying to do for quite some time was take out its June highs. We took those out, and we took those out on the 28th, 29th of August, and we took them out with conviction. Conviction is wide price spread, accelerated volume, goes higher, and now what we're doing, we're pulling right back into that whole area. That's a normal um, occurrence inside the stock market. They like to break out, go higher. If you pull back in there with lighter volume, which we're doing, that's just the, the pullback in a market that still wants to go higher. The 10-year yield for the last six months, the low is uh, 2.039. That was established uh, last, uh, last week. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's the last six months. If we go back for the last year, 1.556 was the low, 2.6 is the high. We are right in the middle right now. We're trading at 2.167. So if you do need, uh, you're gonna buy a house, you're gonna refinance, go do it, folks. Because that uh, brings uh, that rate at about uh, 3.65 on a 30 year. Uh, silver, we take a look at the silver market. What do we have with silver? Silver right here is trading at a price point of 1794. And the silver market's set up a little bit differently than gold. So silver, 1756, I expect we're still going to get down to that level. Um, that's where it overtook, uh, that was the 28th, the same day. That was the August 28th. That's when it went with force. Uh, it went again with force on the 5th. Now, what it did, uh, sorry, September 5th. What it did here today is that it came into the 5th and rejected that lower price. Still looks strong. That's the bottom line. They, both metals do look strong, and what that's going to be all about, of course, is that can the U.S. dollar do anything? Can it get any uh, action going? Uh, over at Bitcoin out here today, what you had is uh, inside the Bitcoin market, uh, you had uh, Jamie Dimon, the J.P. Morgan uh, executive, come out and say that uh, Bitcoin uh, is a fraud. It wasn't going to, um, you know, end well. Uh, that took Bitcoin down from a 42.73 to a 41.28. Uh, bottom line, we'll, we're all going to find out what's going to happen in Bitcoin one of these days, folks. Bottom line is it has been an expansion uh, that's pretty tremendous. There's no two ways about that. We're going to take a look at the uh, oil market. What we have with oil, uh, oil looks to me, folks, that it's not going to be able to catch the bit, this bid. You have 21 cents today. Uh, you're going to have, uh, you know, the... 
uh, API numbers coming out at 4.30 today. Um, we'll have those numbers for you, but uh, right now the way oil's trading, we're at 48.28. Um, it looks like this $50 mark is uh, too far away from it, and uh, 47 to 45 is going to be coming at you once again. What's intriguing about oil, of course, is that uh, you had the dollar get destroyed, oil still couldn't get the higher price. Now this uh, dollar, uh, I suspect, looks like it's going to do a small bounce. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. We have the uh, Dow Industrials. Uh, they closed up 61. NASDAQ up 22. S&P's up 8.5. We are going to be right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we had the uh, Dow Industrials uh, finish up uh, 61. You had the uh, NASDAQ up 22. S&Ps are up 8.5. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Andy Hecht, as we do each and every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, Andy's got a great show here every Tuesday and Thursday, 5 to 6 Eastern Standard Time. You can get this program right on your cell phone. You go to TFNN.com. You hit Tiger TV. Now, uh, what Andy also has going on right now is a phenomenal special. And what it is is this. Uh, Andy had done a, a full course uh, approximately uh, about seven or eight months ago, I believe. Um, and what this course is, is daily um, is uh, commodity markets, demographics, 
They're the 12 essential lessons for trading commodities. You can come over to our website right now. You can test drive either Andy's daily newsletter, which is Daily Essentials, or his Technomental Commodity Report, which is a weekly. Uh, test drive either one of those, you are going to get that full course. Uh, immediately, you'll get the September lesson. The September lesson is commodity markets and demographics. October is going to be the market breakdown, physical versus derivative. November, overview of the market structures. December, backwardation, contango. You can find all of these right on the front page of TFNN, folks. Check it out. It's a great deal. Andy Heck, what's going on? I am so happy to hear your melodious voice. Oh, How man. are you doing? I'm doing good. We're, yeah, we're, we're happy that uh, we dodged the bullet, folks. That's the bottom you line. You did dodge the bullet. I was watching it. I, we were, I was trying to text you over the weekend. I was yeah. I was worried about you guys. But Thank um, you. Yeah. I think I think uh, I think the thing was, you know, maybe 20, 30 miles uh, uh, in the right direction for you. And that's all it was, too. That's exactly yeah. what it was. It, it was turned close. it turned north, folks, just about 20 miles before us, meaning we would have got the eye. Yeah. And um, unbelievable. It must have been ugly, though. Did you watch the storm? Where did you watch it from? Oh, yeah. We were at our, my house. I was. Yeah. yeah, we were we were boarded up. But did you we peek, had a, did we you had peek a outside? Oh, of course, yeah. Right. Of course, yeah, I know. Right. You have to do that. Yeah. It must have been really, I mean, it's really dangerous because the stuff's flying around there. No, it and, is. You know, and, you right. know, I'd already been, I mean, I was in Hurricane Bob, and that was like a two or three, and then I was in Katrina. So I knew <laughs> I don't like uh, hurricanes, folks. It's right. scary. You, you, you well, have they, absolutely no control. They can know? take you down in a second. There's no oh. doubt. And once they start, man, you better be prepared because guess what? <laughs> You're not going to be able to do anything during a hurricane. That's, yeah, you just those, gonna... those pictures from the Keys, do you have lights at home? We don't. No, we're still yeah. out. Yeah. Well, we'll uh, our neighborhood, you know, there was different gusts, and our neighborhood got hit pretty good. But but not, not damage-wise. It was just right. tree limbs, folks. And fences are down, you know, which is great. I mean, it, it's... That, that's a... Yeah, that's, that's nothing. That's, that's right. nothing, that's nothing compared to what yeah. it could have been. Could have ripped roofs off. And, oh, totally. You know, you look at these pictures in the in Key West and well, stuff. Well, even like, right, really, third, well, about 40 miles away, 60 miles away, that's what it was doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. Really ugly. But thank God. Yeah. Um, you know, so the markets rebounded. Uh, I, I think that a lot of what's the action in the markets, well, of course you have Apple today. Yeah. And, you know, Tim Cook, uh, he's, you know, he's kind of the, the uh, uh, he's done a really good job since uh, Steve Jobs. Oh, yeah. Left. He's, nope. he's the guy now. Nope. No he's doubt. He's the man. No he's, question. No doubt. Listen, he's done a good job. That keeps excitement in the market. I think that more than watching the stock price, what they did today was a great marketing gig for the upcoming holiday season. Yeah. Uh, with right. some of their new products. I think, you know, you look at this, hey, you know, it's it's for the stock a lot of this meeting, but it's also, you know, this is a giant sales uh, uh pitch. Oh, it is. And they get a lot of free media that they don't have to pay for because we all cover it. Everyone covers Imagine, it. Imagine, you know, and folks, there's no doubt. Out. That that the amount of free media they got out there today is phenomenal, and those it those is. watches are pretty inexpensive. Right, and hey, now they're like you know they could work from anywhere. You don't need the iPhone in your pocket. It's uh, pretty cool. You, you know, you know it cracked me up, man. They, they they were saying folks that they sell more watches than Rolex. Well. No kidding, Dick Tracy. No I, mean, kidding. I mean, you know, it's a three hundred dollars. Yeah, instead of five or ten thousand or whatever. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. That was that, that was strange, man. I, but anyway, the question is, who makes more money per unit? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. That's the question. Right. Anyway, so uh, that you know, that's uh, helping the market. I think also what's helped the market the last two days is the fact that, as you experienced, the hurricane wasn't quite as damaging as it could have been. So, you know, a lot of the reinsurance companies, the insurance companies, you know, they're breathing a sigh sure. of relief. Their pocketbooks are, are, are breathing a sigh of relief. So um, that's helped the market go higher. The dollar is stalled a little bit here. Um, that's putting a little bit of pressure on the gold and silver markets. And hey, we went through Founders Day in North Korea, and uh, you know our uh, our friend over there didn't fire any missiles or test anything yet. Right. Uh, so you know that the gold is coming off on on the back of that. I think you know we've dropped about twenty five bucks or so. Hey, this yeah. is not a big correction. And quite frankly, I think if gold could stay above thirteen between thirteen hundred and thirteen ten, it still looks really good to me. No, and I think that's what we're going to get. I mean, I, right. I, I like how, you know, it's pulled back on light volume. Yeah. And that's yeah. what we need. Bottom line, I don't think it's done yet. You know, I think we get some more, 
two day one to coming back. I, you know, I, I can picture well, coming I, back I, a little I, bit I more. Think, but. I think you come back a little bit more if the yeah. dollar bounces a little bit, and that's very high odds here. I know, but it's I, I agree, but it's like it, isn't it a no trip weeks. like even today? And, you know, and folks, the Andy and I have no been talking weeks. about this. I mean, normally <laughs> you get a you bounce, and it's amazing that it's and, and you had another nice downdraft last week. You know, oh, and yeah. it looked like, you know, everyone that was out was out. I mean, you didn't even, when it busted into the lows, it didn't even have monster volume. So that means that there weren't buy stops underneath there, man. Do you know what I mean? You People, know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. I thought that this deal that Trump did with the Democrats and then the talk about getting rid of the debt ceiling, even though we know right. it's a farce, right. okay? I think this is really bearish for the dollar because, you know, it, at oh, least yeah. the debt ceiling is some kind of discipline where they got to stop and at least look at it and right. talk about it. And, you know, with, in the absence of that, there's like no discipline for politicians who love to spend money. No, I, there's no and, doubt. And so what Andy's talking about, folks, that last week when the, the debt ceiling got done, the, something else that's on the table said, hey, why don't we just get rid of that we got to go through this? Because, see, this only came into effect, I don't know how many year, more years ago, but it, it's not a long time that that whole thing's been in effect. But it, it, that would be another blank check. There's no doubt, man. It's like, okay. Right, right. You know. It's like, you know, let's raise the limit. Let's, let's not raise the limit on our credit card. Let's get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, well, and then, so the argument on the other side is that that means we always, we, which we always would do, I think, is pay our debts anyway. So that's their argument on the other side. Right. Let's say, I understand. Hey, but I agree with you, man. I think it's we a blank. We will until we won't. You and know listen, what I mean? it's a blank you, check. You know, they a blank they, check. They love that. And if, of I course, like discipline in government checks and balances, and you're getting rid of a check and balance. <laughs> yeah, in right. In my opinion. That's that, my I, opinion. This is no doubt, man. There's no doubt. Right. So, so you know, I think that that is inherently very bullish for gold. And and gold actually went up to 1360. Oh, yeah, yeah. On the back of that. Right. And, you know, all right, where are we now? 1335. We're still, you know, at a high for 2017. Oh, yeah. Um, silver. Silver is the one. To me, this is a tightly coiled spring, Tom. Yeah. You know, this thing, we're going to come in here, this thing going to move. Uh, I really believe it's going to move. And it's hanging in there. And, you know, volatility, daily volatility is down at 12.77% in silver. Too low. Yeah, you stay right there. Andy and I are going to be coming right back, folks. And we're going to be having those EIA numbers, uh, the oil numbers for you. They come out at 430. APIs. Um, API, API, thanks, Andy. Dow up 61, NASDAQ up 22, S&P's up 8.5. We're going to be right back. If you're looking to open your portfolio to a world of opportunity, consider the new Market Safe Emerging Currency CD from Everbank. This three year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC. Tom O'Brien has just announced that he'll be coming to Boston September 30th for a free workshop, The Art of Timing the Trade. Join Tom O'Brien Saturday morning, September 30th at the Boston Marriott in Burlington, Massachusetts as he breaks down his trading methodology and provides you with the tools to become a more successful and profitable trader. Everyone that attends in person will receive a free signed copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. Daryl Martin from Apex Investing Institute will also be presenting for 90 minutes at this free event. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. Join me in Boston on September 30th as I return to my hometown for a workshop about the art of timing the trade. I look forward to seeing all the tigers and tigresses for this special free event. All action starts early at 7.30 a.m. with a continental breakfast and wraps up at about 1 p.m. Topics that Tom will be covering during his presentation include quality volume, cause and effect, ABC structures, swing points, and much, much more. For all the information on this free Boston event taking place Saturday, September 30th, visit the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade Think or Swim is now at 11 a.m. followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We had the uh, Dow Industrials finish up 61, NASDAQ up 22, S&P's up 8.5. We're talking with our man, Mr. Andy Hecht. We are talking markets. We're talking the commodity markets. And, of course, don't forget, every uh, Tuesday, Thursday, right here at TFNN, 5 to 6, Andy's got a great show. Get it right on your cell phone, TFNN.com. Hit, hit Tiger TV right on the right-hand side. So... So uh, I'm, I'm expecting I'm expecting in these API numbers that we're going to see a decent size increase in oil okay. uh, um, uh, inventories and a decrease in the gasoline and the distillates. Um, I'm also expecting that we're going to see a big increase in natural gas on Thursday because when the power goes out in these populous areas, right. less, people don't use as much energy. Right. So, no, we... So, Right. We, we haven't had energy in three days. <laughs> right, exactly. You know better no, than not anyone. three days. Uh, well, no, two days. Yeah, two days. Yeah. Well, you know better than anyone. So, right. so the, the bottom line is we're going to see bills in crude because the refineries were out in Texas last week. We're going to see decreases in, in, the, in the gasoline and the distillates, and we're going to see an increase in natural gas this week. We might even see 90, 80, 90, 100 BCF in natural gas, but natural gas has drifted higher. And by the way, while it's been, drift, while it's been trickling into inventories okay. it's been going lower so don't be surprised to see a rally on the back of a big increase in yeah. inventories because you know this is a crazy market these are crazy markets now also tom today while we're waiting for these figures okay. to come out, yep <clears throat> the um uh, u.s department of agriculture issued its september world agricultural supply and demand estimates report oh the was the and yeah, the WASD oh. came out today, and that's why the grains headed south, because the bottom line is that consumers and end users are the big beneficiaries of this report. The fifth straight year of, of bumper crops and, uh, you know, big inventories wow. coming, and, and that's what's going on in there, and the soybeans, the corn, the wheat. But remember, they've already fallen to pretty low levels, so, you know, the downside's kind of limited here because the low dollar is supportive of exports of U.S. grains. So, um, you know, it's easy to knock a market down when it's been rallying like we saw in the July and the August WASDE report. Sure. Uh, but now that we're down here, you know, there's not a lot of juice left on – not a lot of longs left to knock out of there on the, on the long side. And you, you, you see a little bit of more drifting action in prices here. Now, so, hey, talk to me about – man, this is pretty amazing. So the cotton market went to the moon last week, and it went in right. two days. It went limit down both days, huh? Well, yes, and, and that's a simple reason. Uh, uh, Hurricane Irma did not go to South Carolina. Okay. And South Carolina is a big cotton state. We did see some damage from uh, uh, the, the Hurricane Harvey in Texas, but that was small. Wow. Um, what a – South Carolina. What a ride that is, man. Uh, it's a Holy wild ride. cow. It's a wild ride. But, but I think that it will stop at a higher low. Okay. Uh, because we do have some. But had that storm hit South Carolina, oh, that, that cotton market could have gone to 80, 90 cents. Just look at what frozen concentrated orange juice is doing. I mean, we're up at around 156 now. Yeah. And orange juice is not only looking at the 
devastation to some of the groves from Hurricane Irma. It's also looking forward to winter and potential for freezes in some of those groves. And we always tend to rally. If you remember last November, we reached an all-time high in orange juice. It feels like 100 years ago, but we traded at $2.35 a pound. And wow. we've just rallied from $1.20 to $1.56 uh, in the OJ market. And for good reason, because, hey, Florida is a big, you know, oh, yeah. producer of the marginal orange. Brazil is the big producer. Right, uh, right. But, um, so the, know, the uh, API, the, the first number just came out. So the uh, U.S. crude stockpiles plus 6.18 million barrels last week. Right. So as as we we opine, we'll get the rest of these too. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, big up in the oil makes sense. Right. No, it, it totally makes sense. Right. We're gonna need now, we'll a, gasoline, We're gonna need all that gasoline well, right down here in Florida right no, now. I know. Though. I think you're it's, gonna see a draw in the gasoline, but we'll see. You know, uh, when the when the number comes out and the distillates will be interesting as well. Um, these crack spreads remain over twenty bucks a barrel, Tom, which is very uh, buoyant for this time of the year. Yeah. Well, you know what's intriguing too is that, and I don't know what this tax is. How much it is meaning, but uh, the governor here. Yeah, he suspended your tax, right? Yeah, he waived the well. He waived the import tax, state tax for oil companies bringing it in here. Yeah, that's yeah. what he did, waived. Did, do you think he did? Do you think the local authorities, the government in Florida, did a good job? Yeah, they did. Yeah, okay, they definitely that's did. Important. Yeah, hey, it's listen, I, you know, that's the bottom line. Yeah, I think people, politics aside, they, you got to know. Yeah, they were they, they were all, a good job. they were all over it, man. Yeah, it was. Yeah. You know. I, you know, it seems that, I mean, you know, they were, I think a lot of us were really lucky, the aspect that um, it was, you know, so far ahead of us. Do you know what I mean? We were, like, they, some of the press was saying that the people in the West Coast didn't get prepared, but I saw a plenty of people in my neighborhood who were prepared, man. Yes. <laughs> you yes. know what I mean? Well, you also had a lot of lead time. Yeah. Um, but that's a, also, the, which, the, which the storm also helped. It slowed down a lot. Yeah. It slowed. I mean, it slowed down to a crawl. I remember Friday and Saturday. It was like they were they were doing reports from Tampa, and it was dry and looked fine there, you know. And then when it hit, it got really ugly. Yeah, no doubt. But, and you uh, know, I, with you, if you're looking at a map, folks, what what had happened is that like uh, Kissimmee is you know, is to the right of us, and that Kissimmee is you know basically uh, Disney World. Yeah. They always they say Orlando, but it's actually to Kissimmee. Uh, and what happened, we were just so lucky because it took that right, you know, basically on their line, you know, and, and actually yeah. start there higher than us. So by the time it got there, it went even more east. Uh, yeah. But that was... <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, the repair in the Keys is going to be yeah, tough. Be, yeah, that's going to be I intense. I wouldn't want to be down there in Key Largo, Key West. Oof, no. very tough. I can't believe that 10,000 people... Rode the storm out down there. Is that what they said? See, you I haven't said even 10, seen TV. 000. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Know, so ten thousand people in the Keys. <laughs> I, you know, that's, that's a little crazy. That's Key West, man. To, to me, that's a little crazy, but you know, hey, no, I'm with him. Right? Okay, yeah. Let's let's. So <laughs> yeah. we got we got the next, rest of the numbers here too. Okay. So uh, Cushing plus one point three two million barrels. Gasoline minus. Oh, look at that. Minus seven point nine million barrels. That's, that's big, it. right? Yeah, that's the stilts minus 1.81 million barrels. So just as we said, you know, a big build in, in the in the oil because yeah. it's not going into the refineries. Yeah. And because the refineries weren't working, you're seeing big draws in inventory because the refineries aren't pumping it. I view this bullish for the oil market. Um, this number, even though you have a big uh, increase, we'll okay. have to see what EIA says tomorrow. But again, it supports market structure because it is, supports these crack spreads, Tom. Yeah. You know, the, you know, we could get up to thirty dollars a barrel on the on the gasoline in the heating oil crack spread, uh, which is kind of you know that's very supportive for the underlying market there. Yeah, and, and, you and know, oil's folks, done okay. You know, and when, when Andy's talking market structure, well, guess what? He's that's got great. a great course right now. Uh, 12 right. essential lessons uh, inside the equity market. You can get this by just test driving one of his newsletters, either the Technometric Commodity Report um, or Daily Essentials. This is quite right. a course, and, and, man. 
And in there, you know, listen, I don't only go over the crack spreads. I go over demographics. I go over um, uh, all of the things that make up market structure, like term structure or the forward curve. Yes. Really how to look at that processing spreads, which is the crack spreads and, and the crush spreads and the beans and other things. Um, also, the location spreads, the quality spreads, all of the things that really make up, as well as the ETF and ETNs. I have to love it. You want to be a pro, folks, inside the commodity market? Check it out right the front page of TFNN. Andy, have a great one, a safe one. We look forward to your show in 20 minutes. Thank you. Thanks, man. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Amazon. Uh, this is pretty wild. Uh, you know, you had GE go to Boston and specifically South Boston. Uh, Amazon has done the same thing, folks. Uh, but this just come across the tape. Of course, Amazon last week, they were saying they they want um, proposals. They're going to open a second headquarters. Well, several senior Amazon executives advocate putting a second headquarters in Boston, according to a person briefed on the matter. Last week, Amazon unveiled plans to open a new base and invited states and local governments to submit proposals, while uh, other cities may ultimately win out. Boston has been considered for its proximity to Harvard, MIT an airport with nonstop flights to Seattle and D.C. and lower cost of living than many other big cities. I don't know about the cost of living, but <laughs> they're right up there with everyone else. Uh, Amazon already has a close association with Boston, having purchased a local robot maker, Kiva Systems, for $775 million in 2012. The e-commerce giant uh, 
plans to add 900 jobs in their new office along the Four Point Channel uh, in the spring, close to the new headquarters being built by GE um, General Electric, which is focusing on the so-called Internet of Things. MIB, MIT recently announced a major breakthrough on voice-activated technology that could be of interest to Amazon, which sells the Echo Smart Speaker. Uh, bottom line, uh, <laughs> that if Amazon does that, that's going to be pretty wild, folks, because uh, um, there, there's no doubt. Um, well, here, this is interesting here, what this writer is writing here. Picking Boston would disappoint many Amazon employees with families hope, hoping for a more suburban location like Austin, Texas, that offers affordable housing options beyond apartments and condominiums. Um, if, if Amazon opens up uh, in Boston, Boston real estate is expensive now, but I'll tell you, that would be, uh, it's, so it's $600 a foot in South Boston right now, folks. That's six, that's, yeah, that's, that's a real number. $600 a foot, pretty amazing. Let's go take a look at uh, one of these biotechs, uh, ICPT. Now, this is pretty heavy. This is, so, this is Intercept Pharmaceuticals. Um, this came down 15 bucks today. And this is pretty intense. Uh, what's intense, I guess. So, Intercept Pharmaceuticals, folks, they manufacture market biopharma products. The company's focus is on the development and commercialization of therapeutics to treat chronic liver diseases, which, of course, you, you, you die from and you die from pretty quickly, and it's a, it's a bad scene. Utilizing proprietary bile acid chemistry. Now, that being said, what you had out here, uh, this test just didn't go right. Um, so, uh, 10 people have died after taking a liver disease drug made by Intercept Pharmaceuticals, dealing a jarring setback for the once high-flying biotech company. The New York-based drug maker shares plunged 14% today, uh, the biggest one-day drop since November to close at $98.12. It's a long fall from just two and a half years ago when they were trading at 400. Well, I'll show you how they traded the 400, though. Uh, the company is warning doctors uh, that uh, Okaliev can cause injuries, organ failure, or death, and it's not to be, and it's not, if it's not used exactly as intended in patients with uh, primary bilateral um, something, <laughs> a relatively rare liver condition for which the drug was approved last year. About 15,000 prescriptions of that have been written since it was introduced. Oh, my God. Okay, the deaths occurred over a 13-month period that ended in June. So you got 10 people, 15,000 prescriptions. It doesn't say how many people are on it. Bottom line, um, you can see these biotechs. They can get pretty intense. So when you bring, when we bring this equity back, what you're going to see is that uh, when they first came in with evidently a, a breakthrough, uh, this stock in the month of January of 2014, traded from $65 to $497 in one month. Uh, the next month, it traded to $437, uh, 280 to 437 Next month, 306 to 284 And then, guess what? Never looked back, all the way down to these uh, lower prices. The amazing part, let me just see this. So that's 2014. This still has a market cap of $2.4 and it is... It takes in a hot 38 million a quarter. That's it. It's pretty amazing. You know, when, when this actually, when they traded this up to 400, so picture this. If you want to see a mania, how it can take place. When they traded this up to $400 a share, it only had 1.7 million in revenue. Now, granted, the expansion of revenue went quick. 2014 was 1.7 million, 2015, 2.8, 2016, 25, 2017, 134. Now, after this announcement out here today, I don't, uh, next year they were supposed to do uh, 245, but after an announcement like that, um, <laughs> it's going to be a close call as to uh, how much more they're going to be adding because uh, your liver, folks, uh, is really crucial, there's no doubt. And uh, I guess... Yeah, I guess if you're going to die from liver disease or take the drug, you're going to take the drug. Yeah, that would make sense. It totally makes sense. 877-927-6648. Uh, Let's go take a look at Nordstrom. So Nordstrom surged as much as 12% late trading. 
uh, after uh, members are close to picking Leonard agree to help to finance uh, the transaction of this would be uh, so Nostrum surge as much as 12 percent late trading after report that private equity firm Leonard Green and Partners may help fund a buyout of the department store. So let's go take a look at it. So uh, JWN trading 4505 after the close though. Yeah, we're, we're up five, four more dollars. You're, at, uh, you're up four bucks, you're at 49. And if we take a look at this, you know, this is a retailer that uh, didn't get killed as much as the rest of them, but uh, $77 down to 45, let's just see your short interest. See, the short interest in all of these are pretty intense. Short interest is 20%. You are a BN, if you wanna see something, uh, Urban Outfitters. So Urban Outfitters uh, just came in with a 32% shot position. And this is when, this is one that, you know, bottom line, it came in with decent numbers. It bounced off the low, $16.68 up to 22. But as it's running up to 22, that shot interest just keeps getting bigger and bigger. You know, this is an equity that was down from 40, made a low out here at $16. So we'll see how many more of these. Uh, let's go to Macy's right now, actually. Yeah, Macy's still at 22 bucks. That's, that's a stock that just continues lower. That's, that's going to go after its low from 2008, which is 12. Well, the high of the low is $12.48. That's pretty intense. There's no two ways about that. Um, this uh, SPG. So let's look at the largest owner of malls. Yep, that's trouble in paradise too. So um, Simon Property is down 277 today. You are trading 157.55. We put this back a bit. Yeah, these, this mall thing's not changing. This is down from 229. This is building cause to do a monster ABC down. So. They're going to have to figure out what to do with malls. They're going to have to figure that out pretty quickly. Just like, you know, medallions in New York City, right? Bottom line. Um, you know that in medallions in New York City, folks, is that the city actually sold new medallions at the high in 2014. There's a great article, uh, well, as long as you didn't buy one, uh, inside the New York Times today. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today.
with over $56 million in cash and over $66 million in working capital, Great Panther Silver is positioned as a company with a solid foundation and poised for growth. While completely unhedged to the price of silver, Great Panther retains 100% ownership in two producing mines in Mexico, which is the top silver producing country in the world, along with future potential production in Peru. Great Panther is highly leveraged to the price of silver, and after a great year of performance in 2016, Great Panther Silver has a strong outlook for 2017 as well. With good liquidity in trading and strong fundamentals on the balance sheet, while remaining completely unhedged to the price of gold and silver, now is a perfect time to take a closer look at this equity. If you'd like to find out more about Great Panther Silver, then go to greatpanther.com or check them out on the NYSE market, symbol GPL, or the TSX, symbol GPR. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Apple, it's going to be all about Apple tomorrow morning, folks. If they can uh, get uh, the juice underneath it, that would uh, uh, no doubt get the NDX uh, into the highs. The NDX haven't, hasn't uh, got to the highs yet. It's sitting right next to um, the high that was generated out here uh, on the on the 27th of uh, July. That's 5995.770. We're at 5995.637. So we're laying right at this. The, the actual high in the NDX is uh, 6009. And I'm sure, you know, when folks get home tonight, they're going to hear all about Apple. It's going to be just about everywhere. Uh, and we'll see whether they can bid it up. Uh, what they couldn't do out here today is bid it up. Uh, it was Basically, between the bulls and the bears, it was a draw. You had, it's down 64 cents. You had a high out here of $163.96. You had a low of 158. Uh, the problematic part, um, if this gets any lower, it, or if it closes a, a lower price than today, is that this right now has volume off its high, not at its high. So if it had gone up and over the high, it would be a different ball game. Bottom line, couldn't make its high, made the low of the high, sold off from that point, really turned into a sideways day, however, because this has been the same place that's been trading since the 8th of August. 8th of August, that's when it reached the 161 area. Been kind of going sideways from then. Uh, what it does have, though, is it has a, a high that has anemic volume, meaning 16.5 million. Then you came off that high with 29 million. A uh, bottom line today, uh, you know, we did 71 million. And the real kick is going to be, uh, do you come down tomorrow with volume? And if we come down tomorrow with volume, uh, that is going to set up a triple top inside the NDX 100. Because when you take a look at the NDX 100, Apple basically can rule. doesn't have to rule the NDX 100. But because of the weighting structure, can rule the NDX 100. You stay right there, folks. A man, Mr. Andy Hex, is going to be coming up next. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. And whatever you want in life, folks, visualize it like a nice big motion picture. Step into it, take ownership of it, and fly with it. Thanks for being here, folks. Have a great night, safe night. Stay right there. Andy's coming right up. Go get him, folks. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com.